Based on that information, here is a typical stretch of invasion land, a target for liberation. Here are some of the defenses of the enemy our soldiers faced when they made their landing. Submarine mines sprung out in the water, controlled to blow up any invasion craft which approach. Landmines on the beaches, beyond the beaches, mines everywhere, thousands on thousands, to tear the legs off American men, blast the tracks off American vehicles, all of them covered by machine guns and automatic rifles, hundreds on hundreds of these weapons. On the roads, in the cities, in the fields, the pillboxes, the foxholes, set at angle so their crossfire must reach and slaughter American men, whether they're fired in fog or smoke screen during the day or night. More German infernal machines. In the waters off the shore, obstacles. Jagged steel and iron spikes and spears designed to rip open landing craft, plunge American men into the boiling sea. On the beach, wire. Millions of yards of barbed wire, hooped, tangled, set to shred the bodies of American soldiers. Two releasing torpedoes which shoot out to sea. Along the shore, a huge concrete seawall. Hidden in recesses, camouflaged, the coastal guns. In addition to these monsters, the giant railway guns. Incredible, unbelievable. nonetheless lethal guns, field artillery, rocket guns, massive mortars, their shells falling with annihilating force. The Nazis make use of every stunt known to military defense. Intricate systems of steep walled canals, infantry stoppers, tank traps, other tank obstacles, roadblocks, ditches, barricades, artificial floods in the lower parts of the land, forcing troops and vehicles to bypass them, only to move under the muzzle of Nazi howitzers and cannons. Back from the beach, a line of bunkers blockhouses, ramparts connected by subterranean tunnels. All these protecting still another bulwark of defense, the fortified towns. The windows are walled up, except for slits which conceal German guns. The approaches and intersections are guarded by artillery, blocked by wire and overturned trolleys. There are no civilians here. They've been evacuated long since. Only Hitler's soldiers walk and wait in the haunted streets. Here is perhaps Hitler's most formidable defense. His men, the creatures of fascism, the pick of his Nazi regiments, the most unyielding of his fanatics. The 
the coastal defenses. More major areas and elements of resistance reach back deep into the continent. The enemy's armored divisions, Panzer troops, the giant Tiger tanks. A network of railroad lines and highways over which whole divisions, as many as a dozen, were to be moved to any part of the invasion area overnight. A transportation net indispensable to the Germans, but useless to the Allies. For the Nazis can be depended upon to demolish every serviceable installation as they retreat. German weapon. What is left of the Luftwaffe? Here, on stretches of land like this, our most desperate battle merely begins. As we reach and break through one line of resistance, we can expect only another, and another, and another. Invasion can never stop. If we fail to press forward relentlessly, the German defenses will turn into German offenses, determined to push us back into the sea. No matter what the cost in equipment, no matter how long the casualty lists, there is no rest in invasion until victory.